Hello there. Chatbots and voice assistants are one of the most important tools in today's and especially in tomorrow's world. But who are the people behind them? The conversation designers. My name is Aran Soroka, Head of Marketing Operations for Cocoa Hub Conversational Components. For today's special episode, we cruise to the Caribbean, Haiti, to meet with David Devoto. He's the Director of Operation and Conversation Designer to be for Royal Caribbean, the largest revenue-wise cruise company in the world. How are you, David? Good, thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me. So how are you getting into conversation design? Uh, that's quite a long journey, but uh, basically, just to give you a background, like you said, uh, I'm working in Royal Caribbean. I've been there for many years. I worked on ship as the head of security. And the cruise ships being a total different, uh, unique kind of environment, required for me to have a strong skill, I would say, in communication, problem solving, and, and a lot in customer service. A uh, huge part of my job was basically to talk to people, you know, when they are not at their best. And to do so, I had to design conversation while talking with them to make sure that I lead them to the right way and trigger or not certain kind of emotion. So... I think what helped me a lot in that was the fact that I can speak few languages. And I think in every language, there is a lot of culture. So it helped me to get closer to the people and to, to be able to help them with that. Okay. We can't you get you in a rare situation when you are transferring into a role in conversational AI. Can you tell us how your previous experiences is helping you now and what are the main challenges for you? And the previous expect actually all those skills that I had to to have helped me a lot in my in my previous I mean all those previous experience I could actually transfer them to to now to the design but uh, I think the biggest if I can think about it, is the biggest challenges I had while transitioning was basically uh, first to step out of my comfort zone I mean I was many years and on the cruise and I had you know a network and I knew my job and and I was very comfortable with that. And stepping out to a totally new world from technology was for me something kind of hard because you start from zero, let's say, like, and it's, it's everything it's new. And also, I think time management was a, a hard one for me because, again, uh, you start to learn something and you discover different terminology and different tools and then slowly, slowly, you know, you have to, to learn all of them. So I think time management was also a, a big challenge. Okay. Uh, what's the most important thing, in your opinion, for a chatbot when you're coming to, to create this experience? That's a million-dollar question. Uh, in, in the terms of Royal Caribbean, maybe a lot more than a million dollars. No, I think, I mean, I, I haven't designed yet chatbot, so I can speak from the, from the customer side. There is, I would say, maybe five points that are the most important. And number one being remember, like to remember the data. Like I found myself as a, as a customer talking with the chatbot for five, 10 minutes and then being transferred to a customer agent and having to repeat myself again, all over again. That feeling of wasting your time, I think it's, it's very frustrating for the customer wise. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And number two, I think accessibility, it's a big one. Um, yes, accessibility, like the awareness of accessibility is raised in the last few years, but still, I think not enough. And even though, yes, there is a WHO that said that there is about 15% of the world population with disability, even if it sounds maybe just 15%, I think nobody is allowed to, to leave those 15% on the side. I mean, we need to take them into consideration. And in those 15%, I don't believe there is the people that are temporarily disabled. It could be because, you know, an accident operation. So a chatbot needs to be accessible for everyone. Um, except of accessibility, there is also transparency. You know, we are giving a lot of data in the chatbot. And the last few years, there were some security breaches with data being taken, sold. So the chatbot should be able to, to let the person know uh, which kind of data exactly will be taken from him, where the data goes and what's happening. Uh, I would tell so that to personalize the chatbot, you know, like uh, it's not enough to, it's nice that the chatbot remember my name. It's, it's a nice feeling, but as a human, you look for empathy. 
And the persona of the chatbot should be different, I think, from someone that is talking in distress than somebody that is asking some technical issue. Uh, like the, the designer needs to think about this type of persona. Also, even though the chatbot might be in English, and I'm sure you, you will agree with me that it's very different to speak with a, an Israeli customer in English than to speak with a Canadian customer in English. So mm -hmm. that personality also, maybe the answer might be the same, but the delivery of the answer should be put in a different way, I would say. Mm -hmm. and the I would say communication, you know, um, it's very important for the customer to understand first that we speak with a chatbot and not with a human from the beginning. Um, and if the chatbot is not capable to understand, I don't know, a few paragraphs, also it has to be told before the person just described all his experience, all their experience or, or, or frustration. So for instance, if the chatbot will have said describe in, I don't know, approximately 20 words or a few sentences, what happened and what you expect from me, it's a lot easier than to have a full paragraph and then the chatbot saying, I'm sorry, I don't understand. I will transfer you to a. Uh, these are kind of life tips. Yeah. How can conversational AI make the traveler's experience better, and how do you plan to to use it on the Royal Caribbean? Uh, like the, again, this this last year, I think what kind of helped us is uh, the fact that a lot of people get forced to use technology. And a lot of people that were not that were not trusting technology basically found themselves using more and more technology. It became something very prevalent in our life, you know. So I think technology might be able to reduce line and, and increase um, revenue, reduce cost. I remember I was reading a book or a sprint, it's called from Jack Nab. I don't know if you know about this one. They were talking about introducing a robot uh, to deliver room service. Oh. And one big, um, big issue that they had with this prototype, like their main concern was if uh, how the customer, you know, when you open the door and you see a robot instead of a human, what would be the reaction? Yeah, you suddenly, <laughs> exactly. So that was before, but I feel like today people are more used and are more confident to, to speak with technology. So. I want to believe that um, when we go back, and hopefully very soon, so hopefully when we start to, to go back to operation, we can slowly, slowly introduce more technology into, into the industry and, and hopefully help everybody. As a conversation designer in process, as I would uh, say, what is the best tip or advice you can tell people that are also embarking on a journey like yours? Uh, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, I would say uh, don't be scared to step out of your comfort zone like don't be shy to reach out to people um, also I mean which means basically put ego aside you know um, it's, it's something I know it can be hard sometimes I mean you are designing or you start to design and you spend a lot of hours on a prototype on a design and then you get feedback or critics that's basically showing you how not ready is your design. I mean, don't take this personally. Uh, just take this as a learning curve. The same with rejection and maybe some people might not answer to you. It's okay. I mean, just, you know, you, you are building thick skin as a designer. And, and I think just, uh, again, put the ego on the side. And the other thing that I would say is enjoy it. Don't rush. I mean, enjoy because I feel like designing, it's not only a job, but it's also a lifestyle. You know, you will, what you will do, you will impact people's lives for the good or for the bad. So take your time, enjoy, try to find that um, middle ground between business and actually helping people. So you can, there is a win-win situation for everyone. And, and reach out to people. There is an amazing community of designers that are always ready to help and assist. I mean, reach out to them. And hopefully once you become a designer, you will give back and be reachable for new designers. Okay, that was great. Uh, it seems like you're in the middle of the journey and uh, you know, cruises, you always get to your destination. 
this way or another. So this is like a chatbot in a way. Uh, David De- Devoto, Royal Caribbean Director of Operations and Conversation Designer to be. Thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you so much, Aran. Thank you very much. And for everybody watching, go check up CocoHub.ai where we bring chatbots to life and giving you all the tools, resources, and knowledge you need to create human-like conversational experiences. Stay safe, take care, and bon voyage.